welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Culture. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be working on a puffy or stuffed pumpkin. I know. With Thanksgiving just done for us here in Canada, it was fantastic and delicious. We really enjoyed our turkey, our stuffing, and uh, all the fixings that go with it. And of course, a homemade pumpkin pie is nothing but the best. So what I wanted to do here is just make, I wanted to conquer more of just small wall hangings. Just little easy projects that you can do in a couple hours or even on a weekend, depending on how far you want to take it. So what I have here is just a plain old a uh, bit of like a plaid looking uh, backing just for the fall sort of color for it and then I chose I uh, actually have this little pattern here I'm somehow I'm gonna figure out how to get it to you guys so you can download it so you can use this as your template okay and then I just kind of cutting the shapes out I used a multi-tone batik here you can see it there you see all my little pieces a b c and d and then e is the stem of the uh, pumpkin so really easy you could just do a heat and bond application for this and be all uh, fine with it if you wanted to uh, but I'm going to stuff it <laughs> so what we want to do is work from one side to the next whether you want to go left to right or right to left that is completely up to you depending on how you want to set it out on your your program or your um, your background okay so we have one piece here so what we're going to do is we're going to stitch, we're going to do a nice zigzag stitch and we're going to zigzag, we're going to leave a space, we're going to leave a space from about here to about here, maybe an inch and a half, something like that, of a gap, okay? So we're going to zigzag all the way down here and then all the way around to the corner and then come back with a complementary or completely contrasting thread, whatever you want to do. Then we're going to take, after it's been stitched with that, we're going to then take some stuffing. So this is where you get your stuffing, not what's left over from turkey dinner. Don't use that. That'll be, that'd be weird. And then you just want to put it in that little gap and be able to stuff that one part. Then we're going to take the next piece and lay it right on top. You're going to lay the, the stitches, so the, the, the fabric right on top of the previous stitches. Okay. There we go. And then when you think about it, how would you want to be able to stuff it? So you would start again over on this side and you would work your way all the way around with the zigzag first and then stuff it a little bit or stuff it as much as you want it to get stuffed. Then come back and close that. And then you're going to want to be able to come in with your next one and tuck it on top or underneath, whichever you want. I think I did work from left to right that time. And then that one, I think I just put right on top. So it's whatever you want to do to get the effect that you that you uh, were so desiring in the end. Okay, so let's let's start off so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, just gonna put it. I do have batting behind this because we're doing a zigzag and it's gonna get like really bunched up. So if you have another stabilizing fabric, fantastic. I have lots and lots of bits of extra batting. So I'm going to go with that one as my stabilizing and it will get pucked, uh, tucked around it and puckered and stuff like that. But don't, don't worry about it. It's just going to add to the, the effect of it. Okay. All right. So back underneath the machine here. And we're like I said, we're just going to do a zigzag. You can choose whatever you like. I've got a 3.8 uh, for the length of the stitch of a cross and then, um, uh, sorry, the width of the cross. And then as the closeness, it is a 0 0.65. So I'm going to start here. And we're trying to get equal portions of the zigzag or the um, appliqueing stitch, about equal portions between the this side of the fabric, the fabric we're trying to applique down, and to our background fabric, okay? and try to keep it nice and straight as possible okay and if you wanted to because this is just a batik or if you're going to be using a batik you could just use a straight stitch because it won't fray this is just to add, add a little bit of texture uh, and depth as well as uh, secure it from, from fraying the tip make sure we're always stopping on the outside when we're uh, when we're doing any sort of a zigzag or an embroidery stitch make sure we're always stopping on the outside of the project before we either pivot or teeter or totter okay. and sometimes you can just kind of curve it as you go and other times you're gonna have to make sure you stop on the outside lift your foot and turn it okay. Mm 
ends over to the side. Make sure you're just kind of going with the, the curve of the fabric. Okay. Okay. Paper templates, we're taking everything with us when we go. <laughs> Always make sure. <laughs> try, try and leave enough space. <laughs> so you don't try to take everything out with you. Come all the way up to the curve, the point. So we don't want to sew over our pin and then we're going to make sure make sure we're leaving a gap a good a good finger width and a little bit so uh so we can make sure we're getting it we can stuff it all right all right and now we're going to stop and then this is where we take a little bit of the batting and we put it in the little gap and then poke it down either with using our finger or a stylist or uh, even an um, um, end of a chopstick or a straw. Get it into the spots we want to get it into. It doesn't have to be stuff like we're stuff, really stuffing a stuffed animal. We just want to give it a little bit of uh, dimension. Right? I'm trying to make some uh, 3D pumpkins. Put a little bit more down. In that corner there. Here, here, let's move over to the table. Okay. So you can see I'm just putting a little bit in the gap and then just working it either with my finger or with the tool to the desired thickness of what we're looking for. Okay. If you don't have any batting like this, uh, like the, the first stuffing batting, you could just use many, many bits of this. Like just use a couple little strips and just kind of, you know, or chop it up or whatever. Okay, we can use a little bit more. Okay. All right. Now, the next piece, we're going to lay this one on top. Okay. And because it's a petite, you can kind of go this way or that way, whichever it makes you happy. Okay. I kind of like that side a little bit better. Okay. Now, what I want to do is make sure I'm pinning this one down and making sure I'm trying to cover my other stitches here too, okay? And we're gonna have to come around from the one side and all the way up and over and leaving that little bit of a gap, okay? So once we do that, I kind of have one almost ready to go with all the rest of the bits done there. It's, it's really easy once you get yourself to there. Uh, just make sure you're kind of flattening the, the batting as you're going uh, down. You're just kind of holding it. Make sure you're trying to zigzag right into that section there, okay? So once you get all those, okay. pretty much going to be like this, okay? Like I said, see, it's going it, to it puckered up all the way around it after the many, many stitches and stuff. So now we want to do is make sure we're going to seal this up here because we've got it stuffed. We've got it zigzagged all the way around. And if you missed anything, you can always just go and touch it up. And then we have our stem here to do. So let's seal this up now. Okay. All right. And we're going to try and flatten. You're going to have to try. I know it's, 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 it gets bulky. But, um, and like I say, if you, if you want, you can just do a straight stitch or you can, oops, that came up. Um, just uh, do, do maybe even a looser zigzag if you wanted to. But you do want the stuffing to stay in there. I am using uh, embroidery threads for this. Got like a, kind of a pumpkin-y, yellowy orange going on here. That'd be nice complimentary. Okay. Again, squish it back over. And make sure we're overlapping. Okay. Oh, okay, that looks good. All right, now trim that up, and then we're going to put our green one on. Stretch that out just a little bit. Okay, try and put our stem. Okay, so I'm sorry, you can see that on the top of the shoulder. Okay. Top part, leave a gap, come down, go all the way around, and then seal up. And we've made ourselves a little 3D stuffed pumpkin. I'm excited.
excited. Now you could use just a blanket stitch for this too if you want to, if you don't have a zigzag or didn't want to do a zigzag. Or you feel like maybe doing just a small little hand project or something. Now make sure you don't sew over your pins. Lifting the foot to pivot. Okay. And you're just trying to follow the curve that you've already set with the cutting out of the stem. You could even add some of those curls with some yarn or some embroidery floss, or if you have some thick fret thread. stopping on the outside following the curves you can turn this into a tiny little pillow or even like a little maybe a little trick-or-treat bag for someone maybe a new trick-or-treater brand new to trick-or-treating nice little memory okay and then we're just going to come up to the side of the stem Now we're going to use that tiny little hole to be able to stuff just a little bit. We don't want it too, too stuffy. I mean, it's up to you. You don't even have to stuff it. So, but we will we'll just pop it. Oh, maybe I don't leave a big bug up. Uh -oh. Did I? I did. I just got to get it in. <laughs> That's the hard part. which is barely big enough. Okay, then you, that's how you do You just work the stuffing in to the density that you want. Maybe just a little bit more. You can see how there's some, some definition there in the stem. And you could even maybe do uh, like a little uh, binding strip and just like, or some ribbon or even use some beads. Maybe even put a little face on this jack-o-lantern, this pumpkin. Um, you can, there's many different little things you could think of. Gee, the only limitation is your imagination. Right? Alright, there we go. And then just trim her up however you want to finish it up. You can, like I said, make it as a little wall hanging. You can uh, stitch this down onto something else if you wanted to. Make it sure it's nice and flat or whatever. Micro stitch behind it. Uh, you know, options are yours. So... And thank you, everybody. Big hugs to you, and hopefully you make yourself a little 3D wall hanging. Take care, everybody. Big hugs to you. We'll see you Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern for our live stream. And we got some giveaways. Giveaways. Mm -mm. We got some, some giveaways. Giveaways. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Have a good one, everybody. See you soon. Move Give away, oh, 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 we gotta give away, give away. We gotta give away, give away. Mm -hmm.